the walk today at Luton Town Football Ground and as you can see this picture was taken around the early to mid 1950s. When they were just building the wall that you can see behind us. Quite clearly you can see that here there were four tracks. The original bridge that was over there, Maple Road, was taken out, the deck was lifted and made higher, but you can just make out the original abutment here is still there today. Okay, this is another picture, as you can see quite clearly, this is 1955, taken looking the other way. You can see quite clearly the two tracks which became one that went into Maple Road sidings, the main line was there and the other line came into a siding and then went into a factory just the other side of Maple Road Bridge. Here we have uh, an ordnance survey map of about 1923. As you can see, we're standing roughly around here where the signal post was. You can see extensive point work and track work here going into the sidings. Over my right hand side here used to be the chocolate factory. Again, you can see by the amount of point work and track work, they had a lot of vehicles going in there, a lot of history, a lot of transport. Just further down, we'll come to what was known as Luton West signal box. When we get to it, we'll talk about more. Um, as you come down further, you can see Brown's Woodyard just disappeared slightly downhill into just a siding, but which used to deliver a quantity amount of timber. Timber, like coal, was extensively used in around the 1920s, 30s, right up until the 1950s. Um, all this area has now changed almost beyond recognition. Once again, I'm totally indebted for Jeff and Sue Woodward for allowing us to use their material. This particular instance, I've taken it straight out of their book, so I shall read what it says. This is the driver's view from a DMU, a diesel multiple unit, as the single track from Dunstable became double tracked through Luton. This was where the single line token was handed back to the signal box man. This photograph was taken in September 1962. The gantry on the right was used by Brown's Timber Yard to unload wagons on a steeply graded siding, while a siding on the left ran back to Maple Road Coal Yard. These two sidings here were just the overspill of the coal yard. As I've already said, coal was extensively used in the UK right up until the 50s and 60s, and everywhere had coal and they used to get tons and tons of it come down from Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire. Here you can see the curve, although it, the road has been wrought up in level, the curve is still the same from the picture that we just showed you. While the siding went down the hill here, where what is now is Hatter's Way. OK, again we go back to the map showing roughly where we're standing. We're actually standing around here, just in front of what was the signal box, between the main line and the coal yard. Um, the road here, which is still there today, is just over on my left, and this has all been turned into a car park. I take it as an overspill for Luton Town Football Grounds, just on our left. And there is the car park which we somehow managed to get in but couldn't get out of. <laughs> and this was once all railway land. Everything you can see around here was all owned by the railway. Okay we've now come up to bridge number 31 Dunstable Road. 
Those of you who have been following us realise that this is now the second time we crossed Dunstable Road after having to do it before right by Dun Dunstable Church Street Station. As you can see the bridge was originally a plate bridge. Basically what this is is several layers of metal riveted together to form a very very strong bridge. You can see quite clearly it was a two track bridge. The one, the track that's still in situ was the up line. The one that we're standing roughly at the same spot now is the down line, down going to Dunstable, up going towards London. What year did you take this photo? This photograph was taken in 2010, just before the bridge, the railway and everything else was taken away for the misguided busway. Right, these were the pictures I took walking along the line on December the 28th, 1991. Not long after the track had been mothballed. This is roughly ex the same position we are now. This is the picture taken the other way, looking back to bridge number 31. As you can see, we were very, the track bed was very much on the level. If you look at the fence on the other side of the road, you can actually see where they hired the busway to go over a new bridge. This is basic because the law on bridges means you have to have a higher um, structure to get um, juggernauts and, and the like underneath. So down below us is the Browns timber yard. timber yard. Now obviously we're a lot higher up than we would have been because they've built it up. Just in the distance there is St Mary's. You can see a tree, a big tree standing in front of it. St Mary's Hospital, which previously was the Luton Workhouse, which is obviously off topic, but something of interest. You can just see in the distance the town hall, which was well built after the World War I because the guys in Luton decided to burn it down because they felt unhappy about how they were being received back after the war. So that's a completely new construction. And we can see the Luton Dunstable Road would have come through here. We can just about see the giveaway signs down at the bottom towards this area here and it would have gone up and round that way and we'll just show you the map of that here and Annie's going to comment on that as you can see Dunstable Road at the time comes straight through there was no roundabout and there's nothing here just a little bit wider at the entrance to Brown's Timber Yard but here was where the original junction for Liverpool Road was once they built the in Luton in a ring road this was all walled off and although Liverpool Road is still there you can't get to it by road unless you do a big deviation round. You'd have to follow it all the way around there. Again this picture is the same as before taken on January 2010 just before the track was ripped up and the bridge come down. You can see quite clearly that we're more on a lower level here than the busway is now. Um, just the other side of Dunstable Road Bridge, looking north towards Dunstable. As you can see, um, there was a crossover set of points. That's so that trains could uh, swap over from the up line to the down line uh, when shunting was in progress. In the background, you can see quite clearly the tall chimney and the massive factory that once was the Cocoa Works. Again, extensive works were here. Um, the amount of industry in Luton was incredible. Just to the side, the left hand side of the picture, you can see the cranes and the timber. The amount of timber that Brown's Woodyard had was enormous, where wood and coal was such a big mainstay of the economy of not just Luton, 
for the whole of Britain at the time. And now approximately, if you look, I suppose we've got the mosque, or one of the mosques of Luton, in the same sort of vicinity, along with the road being coming through from Hattersway. We continue on the walk again across the Brain Dunstable Road A505 bridge number 31, which is, takes us onto an embankment. On the upside of the line was the Luton Gas Works, which were opened in 1848. The works received coal from Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire and produced coal gas. There were three sidings below us where the Sainsbury's car park is now. Other supermarkets are available but this had all gone by the 1920s. Once the gas was produced, it was kept in four gas holders, two of which were very large. This is now where the Lidl's is now. So here was the gas holders, here where Lidl's is. I just about remember seeing them when I was a youngster. Yeah. Here's Sainsbury's. One of the very large gas holders held 678,000 cubic feet of gas. Then in 1910, the fourth and largest was built, a massive 1,100,000 cubic feet. By now, Luton was using gas at an alarming rate. However, there was always a problem making cold gas. Manufacturing gas proved to be hot, steamy and smelly process gas having to be heated to a very high temperature and retort to drive off the gas. After the gas had been distilled from the coal and washed, a byproduct being left coke and tar. The area of the works where these processes were carried out were constantly shrouded in water and gaseous vapours. Newtonians certainly warmed to the use of gas. By the 1950s the site began to reduce in size and by the late 1960s, there was no more coal gas required. Only two of the largest gas holders remained, holding North Sea gas. By 1969, the works were sold for development and turned into the shopping precinct called Westside Centre. However, the building of the Arndale Centre, this in turn closed and now occupy the Sainsbury's and Lidl's. And it's going to just point to where we're standing, there on the map. And as you can see the circular structures on the map, now we're going to show you the after picture. This is an aerial view taken roughly around in the 1970s. Quite clearly you can see the track bed. We're standing just around here. Uh, an embankment was here. Quite clearly you can see the track has now been moved. There's only two towers left. And what was the original gas works was turned into West Side Shopping Centre. My dad used to go there and buy himself Golden Box. And Golden Box was a form of Kentucky Fried Chicken, but he said it was less greasy. Brilliant. You, you can also see on this picture the original Dunstable Road as it come under the bridge. There's Liverpool Road that went up. It just went straight ahead. This is what used to be Brown's Timber Yard. One Fine. more little thing about the West Side Shopping Centre. It used to have the Green Shield stamps. Those oh, yeah. of us who remember, remember when that. you used to purchase things, you used to get Green Shield stamps. And once you filled a book up or two, you could come down and get toys, household furniture, little knickknacks and things, free of charge if you'd filled your book up. This was a picture taken around the 1920s, obviously using a zoom lens from a, a higher position way behind us. But quite clearly you can see the double track bed, the embankment, and underneath the wagons full of coal which went into the gas works. In fact, just in front of these wagons, just where my thumb is, is a big heap of coal. Here was one of the large gas holders which was filled with coal gas. And that's Farley Hill up on the hill? It is, yes. In the distance which is now uh, covered in trees. And just in the foreground here you can see the original Dalla Road School. This bridge wasn't one of the original bridges built by the Great Northern Railway. In fact, this bridge is really new. 
It was only built in the 1970s when they built the Luton Inner Link Ring Road. Um, it was single track, but of course by then it was only used for cement works and for oil trains and maybe the odd passenger train coming up. But you can see it was quite extensive, quite well built. But when they built the misguided busway, they even took this bridge up, which is fairly new, and this is the same place today. Okay, we continue walking now from what was over the bridge, what went over the new Luton Leap Road, and we remained on an embankment. Obviously, the embankment was at a level which took us straight over two more bridges before we actually re reached Luton Butte Street Station. As we come down, there was a siding actually come off down the hill into the gas works. And there was a couple of occasions where trains um, filled with coal, obviously weighed a lot of you know, weight, um, got loosened their couplings and actually derailed. But as we walk along now, the busway has now taken away the embankment, taken away two of the bridges, and is now on we call ground level. You'll soon see when we get there. Right, we continue walking down, heading towards Butte Street Railway Station. You can see quite clearly that the, the busway actually dives downhill. Originally, as I just said, this was on a level. As you look down, you can see the embankment on the left-hand side. This was the original level that the railway stayed upon. Just down there where the traffic lights are was bridge number 30. And just a bit further on, just after that bus where the second set of traffic lights are, that was bridge number 29. Again, my picture taken in December the 28th, 1991, shows the points which then into Butte Street Station. Um, this was still in use and used. You can see how clean the track is and how open it is. Um, and the level of the track meant it went over two bridges. This is the same spot today. Bridge number 30 is the new Bedford Road and you can see quite clearly, although there's only two tracks going, there's actually three tracks. Again, because the industry in Luton, this is quite a wide bridge. Um, we can't exactly replicate where we're standing because the bridge has been dismantled. But as I move down in two seconds, you'll see that the buildings might have changed colour slightly or in situ. This is one of the original signs that were on bridges. They were all, all bridges, even on National Network today, are all numbered. Just in case there's an accident and someone hits the bridge or there's a derailment on it, you can ring up the National Network and you, they will, you can tell them exactly what bridge number you are at and they can go straight there. But in the days of steam, it was also known as an identity. So the driver would know if he needed to put more coal in or less coal or slow down and what have you. Um, as you can see, it says bridge 30, a WLN. That literally means bridge number 30 from Welling. As you said, um, we have an up down and a up and a down line on this railway line. Welling was actually up end of the line. As all lines in Britain, I all go up to London. So bridge number 30 from Welling, the next bridge we'll come to will be 29 from Welling. Can I just very quickly talk about the map again? Yeah. Okay. We've got a bus behind us, I think. Right. That's, that's, that's what I'll do. It's not behind us, is it? It's in front of us. Whee! Shifting. 
There we go, we nearly got a season ticket there. If I turn that over, it'll make it a bit better for... Okay, right. right. Andy coming back in. There we go, my friend. As you can see, this was a plate bridge. Um, plate means literally layers of metal welded to... else. Can't... <laughs> <laughs> right, hang on, Bell. Sorry, mate. Plan right. B. Going for a plan B. What will be the plan B? There we go. Here's a plan B. It's the other way round. Right. Three. Newtonians certainly warmed to the use of block and additional buildings were housed new. Sorry. I can't read my own back in writing. Newtonians certainly warmed to the use of block and addition. Oh, gas and cell. Start again. Newtonians. Yep. 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 And my dad used to go there and buy himself what he called golden bucket or golden, uh, and it was fish and chips. No, let's say it again. By now, we'd gone and the track. <laughs> Sooner or later, we're going to get killed. Sorry. There we go. Oh, yeah. But that was good. Um, right. Yeah. So you can see Brown's timber timber yeah, yard. Timber yard or what was remained of it and what yeah. um, Liverpool Road. It was quite something. I remember coming down here many times, buying some few little models and things. Yeah. I remember kettles. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, going back to Star Wars, 1977, I think that was the film. Yep. Yeah, there we are. And that's where we queued up to watch it. And there used to be a McDonald's there, but it wasn't very successful. Well, there we go.